All right. I think it's time. Hello, hello. Hey, Amy. How are you today? I think last week you said you weren't going to be able to watch live, and I remember you coming on. So you must have caught it, cut the tail end. I don't know if I want to put these on yet. But yay, we're back on this page. Now we just have to hope that everybody kind of remembers to come back over here. Gosh, such excitement, such like always something. Even this week we had uh, still um, some like, oh no, something's still not right um, kind of thing. But we're like, we're super close to, um, we think, super close to all being like back to being situated and getting the other page shut down just trying to make sure all those little details are taken care of before we do that but it's exciting and I said the other day in my I don't know one of one of my posts about how it does feel strange um like I feel almost like a stranger coming back over here I feel it just feels weird and I don't know why that is but um it just definitely feels different coming back over here after having gone through all of that. It's been quite a five months in terms of all of that stuff. So, hello everyone. If you're coming on, make sure you say something. Um, and if Darcy ends up on here, I forgot to, um, we both forgot to um, pick the winner for last week. So if you're there, Darcy, and you see this, and you could pick the winner for, from last week for commenting, um, you know what, I don't know if, if it'll come up on my iPad. Send it over to me, but if I can't get it because I'm live, then I'll come back in and I'll say, I'll, I'll add it in to the comments later. And if it's one of you, I'll just reply to your comment and let you know, because we forgot to do that last week and that's what we did. Um, so I'm here to show you, I didn't bring my finished eggs down. Why do I always forget something? I put them on the coffee table this morning, take the picture, and I forgot about them. But um, this was an idea that Darcy had that she gave me. Hi Shelly, hi Gloria, hi Kelly, hi Amy. Um, <clears throat> and when, when I went to look up the... Um, the ones that have been done before, kind of, you know, blog posts or Pinterest ideas, a lot of them, most of the ones that I saw were done with plastic eggs. And we have these wooden eggs that are left. Um, so if you haven't been um, following us over onto the other page in this whole mess of a five months, hey Karen, where I didn't have access and my, my personal page was hacked, which meant that I no longer could access this, page. If you aren't aware of what's going on, I should probably let you guys know. So we started a new section in the shop called the Maker's Market. And it is where we're, I'm gradually doing this um, a little bit at a time, like a little bit every week is all I've been have, able to do. But we're slowly building up the section of the shop that is um, extra inventory that we might have had from one of our boxes, multiple boxes, or kits or various projects that we've done like over the years. So rather than just have all of these wooden backgrounds and extra pieces and this, that, and the other thing sit on the shelf waiting for us to come up with another kit idea, we decided to go ahead and offer them. But what we're trying to do is give you suggestions for how you can use those items. Um, and then it what might not be a full kit, like most of these makers market things are not full kits, but we might have the, you know, the, the base item for you that you could get. So today it's going to be this set of five wooden eggs. So if, if you were here back in April, when I was still on this page, um, we did an Easter egg set that had little stands and we had stencils that spelled Easter. So I have some of these eggs left. Um, we did sets of five. Um, I was going to do sets of six, but when I put them in my bowl this morning, it kind of looked nicer to have an odd number, so I went down to sets of five. But I like that they're wood rather than plastic. Personally, I feel like that works a little better. Obviously, the plastic eggs would be um, fairly inexpensive, 
but I feel like there's a good bit more work and prep involved to do a plastic egg. You would have to spray it, um, prime it to make sure that the paint can adhere to it and then adhere to the paint. Hey, Trisha. Hi, Kathleen. Um, and, you know, just do that kind of background work, whereas the wooden ones are pretty much ready to go. So I would imagine um, I, I saw some that had pretty colors, like the, the idea that Darcy gave me had some really pretty colors, some burgundy, some just some rich fall colors. I would think that you could spray. I didn't try it. Um, if you watched my pumpkin video yesterday, the YouTube video, I sprayed those pumpkins with a paint and primer all in one. Um, I don't have the one that I used yesterday because it was dripping down my hands and made a mess. But something that has a paint and primer in one. <laughs> I'm storing all the paint up on the beam. This eye beam up here. But um, I ended up trying something with a like, whitewash technique. And that's what I'm going to do today because I really liked the look of the neutral. But you could make these in gorgeous colors. Um, you could also just stain them. Like my daughter said, you could just stain them brown and they'd look like an acorn. So you could, you could just stain them. Hi, Darcy. I don't know if you, um, heard me earlier. Um, well, that's interesting. Some of you, it says anniversary follower. I wonder what that means. I haven't seen that before. It means you've been around for a while. So thank you. <laughs> I think that's probably what it means. So we need a winner for last week if you have a chance to pick that. If it's not during the live, I'll just come back in and put it, um, tag that person later or tell them later. So I'm gonna do one egg and show you how I did it. But I just wanted to do them in neutrals, like I said. You could do like pretty like mixtures of browns um, or whatever, you know, you could dab on like a dark brown and then dab over it with a, uh, makeup sponge, maybe a lighter brown or a metallic brown or a copper or silver. Yours is in Spanish. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, well, I hope nobody else is having that uh, that issue. Goodness gracious. Um, well, I'm not seeing it <laughs> that way. Oh my gosh, there's so many weird little things going on. But So I'm going to do mine um, the same way that I did that you saw in the picture. And I'm going to remember to put my gloves on because even when I paint, I forget to put my gloves on. I always put them on when I, almost always put them on when I stain, but I rarely put them on when I paint. And then I'm mad at myself because like I said, I'm constantly putting a uh, new coat of paint over my fingernails. So I'm gonna have my stain ready. I'm using, as usual, Early American. I have a little piece of a twig and hey, if you went through the storms that we went through last night, you might be able to find a good bit of little twigs in your yard. Um, I've had some in my garage for quite a while. I've been collecting them now in different sizes, like bigger ones and smaller ones for bigger projects and smaller projects. This I had in the garage, but you know, just go, you know, grab a small little twig and you just need a little, little couple little pieces. Let them dry out for a couple days and you're good to go. But the first thing I did, I took a chip brush and just some plain white um, acrylic paint. In fact, I'm just gonna take it from the lid. Dabbed it in there. Let's do this. Dabbed it in there, dabbed some off. And I just kind of dry brushed, need a little bit more, dry brushed it on. So this is pretty much what I do anytime I whitewash something. Sometimes I add a creamy color but the chip brush is nice because it it gives it kind of a good bit of wide uh, or you know distance between. And I'm really not concerned about how it looks on the ends or anything. Just you don't want it to be fully covered. You just want kind of that dry brushed method over it. And then I actually also came back and went the other way this time. I was just trying to give it like the look of a little bit of texture. And I'm kicking myself because I left my finished versions upstairs. <laughs> Thought I had everything ready for once. But basically, that's it. So you can cover it as much as you want or as little as you want. But the more space you have and the more wood that's exposed, the more the brown is going to catch. And sometimes if it's thicker in spots and thinner than spots, you're going to see. I love, 
I just really love to watch what happens when you put the stain over top. You can put a gray stain over top and it gives it more of a gray wash feel. The brown gives it more of a creamy, creamy feel. Sometimes you get a combination of both. Now, I'm gonna let that dry for a couple of minutes just because I don't wanna put the stain on when it's completely um, wet because then I'll just kind of rub, when I rub off the stain, I might be rubbing the paint into it. So I'm gonna give it, it's not gonna take very long. You want really, really thin layers, really thin. So it shouldn't take that long to dry. So I'll give that a couple minutes and I'm gonna mention, here's what else I have. This is just what I had in available. I mean, I have multiple kinds of twine. It really doesn't matter. You can go with thinner twine. It's just going to take more. This, this would take a lot more. This is kind of a little bit more than that first one. And then I had this though. I don't even know. There's, I don't have a, um, wrapper or a tag or anything with this. I just happened to have this and I thought this might be a good, um, option. You don't want to use anything that's like, I mean, I have, I don't know why I have all these twines right here in front of me, but this is more like a jute. You don't, this would be way too thick and difficult to work with, but just, you know, you can kind of tell in, in comparison to your egg, how much, what the, what the sizing should look like. Um, I'm going to put a paper plate here so I don't accidentally set stuff down in there. So I'm going to need this twine. I'm going to need my little twig and I have my hot glue gun going nice and hot. But before I do that, while that's drying, I just wanted to mention, so see, this is why it's like, I feel nervous again because I'm back on this page because there's so many of you that were the familiar, you know, the, the diehard I'm here every Friday, you're watching, um, like clockwork every Friday over on the new page. And now I'm seeing some faces that I haven't seen or haven't seen in a while. And I'm grateful, grateful, grateful that you're here. And I'm so glad that I got this page back. I'm so fortunate, even though it took forever, but um, it just feels so strange. So anyway, tomorrow, look, you're gonna, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure it's going to be on Facebook. I have to double check um, all of the rules and make sure that I, I think it will be, but I have to double check some things, but for sure over on Instagram. Go check both of them tomorrow morning sometime before 9. Um, there's two things that we're, we're going to have happening over the course of this next week. Um, one of them I would call kind of like an event of sorts. And the other one, I'm just going to let you wait until tomorrow morning to see. Um, but definitely check here first. Like I said, it'll be sometime before 9 o'clock that I get that posted here. Um, and if you're not seeing it, then you'll, um, if you're on Instagram, definitely check over there. Um, but the other thing that I will tell you ahead of time that I mentioned just ever so slightly in one of the, my previous posts is if you're not already on our email list, go get on it. You're going to want to be on it. So all you have to do is go to lauracleberhome.com. That's it. And I just wait a couple seconds and you know, the, the pop-up will appear and bear with us this has been going on since the beginning of the year and things kind of went awry and sidetracked a little bit because of all of the stuff that happened over the last five months. But <laughs> you're going to see like the pop-up's going to be like, whoo, there's the pop-up. It's going to be like, here's where you can um, join our email list. It's on the larger side because we're learning a new program and it's kind of hard to figure out how to shrink back down a little bit. So bear with us, but um, you can't miss it if you go over there and it um, pops up there right in front of you. It's it's uh, pretty hard to miss. So that's the exciting thing to look for tomorrow. And then over the course of all next week, we have, and I, and I want to go back and say, if you haven't joined our email list, please don't feel like, you know, it's one more thing that I'm going to get all these every day. You know, this, I mean, trust me, we send two a week. We send our newsletter on Tuesday, which if you already get that, you know what that's like. <clears throat> and then we send one Friday that kind of um, talks about what we did in the Friday features. So that is our typical two emails a week, which you know, if you get all of the big store you know, emails is nothing compared to all of that. Now next week, you're going to see that be a little bit different because of the event, but I don't want you to panic and think, oh my gosh, what is, you know, what's going on? 
that's not the case. It's, it, next week is kind of something special. And then everything after that will go back to our typical two. So if you're not on it, I want to encourage you to get on it. Um, okay, and then I won't say anything more, but you'll find out tomorrow um, part of what's going on. But next week, so after tomorrow, also next week, there's just more to come all of next week. So just keep staying tuned. And then, is there something else? I thought there was something else. So it looks like, aw, Robin. Anne, a.k.a. Robin, is our winner from last week. So congratulations. So she's going to get the the shop credit, the $5 credit um, to the shop. All right, so I guess I need this lid back off. I don't know why I put it back on. So now I'm ready to put this on. I'm just going to get a paper towel. You could use a shop cloth or whatever. I'm just going to get ever so slightly just a little bit of stain on there. And then I'm just going to run the stain. But see, like this is so, like I love this part. It's just to see what happens. See how there's a little bit of gray, but yet there's also going to be a little bit of brown. And it just, I love to see what it looks like in the end. And it all, the more you do it, the more you'll see, like it all depends on the kind of wood that you're working on. Um, if it's pine, it might look different than if it's poplar, even if you're just applying stain. And it also depends on how much paint you put on. But cover all of that up after the paint is dry and then wipe it back off. You can even use other colors. You could use, um, you know, other pretty base colors like blues and um, navies and then see what happens when you put, you know, sometimes it's fun just to try things out. But there you can see what happens as a result of that. There's the bottom. So it all depends on how much paint, how th so if it's thicker, Where's the spot? So if it's thicker, like right here, you don't see the darkness. But where you've left some of the openings between the bristles of the, the dry paint, you're going to see it um, take the stain better there. Okay, that's like, I, I just love to look, what, look at what happens when you do that. So now, I would technically tell you to, to hang on and wait. Let this dry a little bit before you fool with it. But for this project, it's not a huge deal. I actually think I'm going to take my gloves off because it's going to be easier for me to work with the, the cording here. So the first thing I do, or the next thing I do, is I'm just going to start wrapping this in concentric circles, just wrapping up. So I'm going to get it as tight as I can there in the middle, hopefully you can see, and wrapping it around. So I don't really want much of, you know, there could be just a little bit of an opening in the middle. I don't really want too much if I can help it. So I want to try to get it tight in the middle. And then I'm going to wrap it until I feel like I can handle, like maybe about that much. Just holding that much with my fingers. And then, so I'm going to put this on the, the thicker end. So there's a tapered end and then a wider, wider end. So I'm ultimately going to get started by putting this on here. So I'm going to go ahead and put, oh, I should have got some more glue. I'm going to have to go get another glue stick. And then I'm going to press that on there as good as I can, trying to keep that as centered as I can too. Press that on as much as I can. It's like, like he has a little hat there. It's like a little, little person. And it might not be perfectly centered. If you can move it at all um, to center it, great. If not, just go with it. But that's the start. And I'm just going to keep adding glue. But I'm, I am going to have to go get a glue stick real quick. I'll be right back. So you take a little look at that while I find a glue stick.
I was smarter and I bought the ones that are longer. <laughs> Sorry about that. That way, hopefully, they'll last a little longer. So I'm going to go back and just ever so gently, you don't want to burn yourself. I just add a real thin, just slowly, you know, a little bit at a time, a, a real thin line of glue. And then sometimes, like I'll show you this on this one. I don't want to go like too far down and think that I'm going to be able to wrap around um, before it dries because sometimes it dries so fast. But usually what I do, <coughs> unless I got too much on there, if I get too much, sliding the, the piece up, if, if I get just the right amount, like just enough, I'll slide this up and kind of press it up against it. But if there's too much, I'll kind of go straight down because I'm trying to keep the glue from seeping out through. If I push it up and it seeps out through, then you're going to see a little bit of that clear stuff. I did it a couple times last night. It's not a big deal in the, in the end, but that's, that's what I do. And then it's just a matter of how do you know when to stop? So I, I looked at some of them and I'm like, this one looks like it's just right. Then other ones, I, I might have gone like a row or two too far. And one of them I got kind of on a slant. I think that was my first one. So if you can see there, I don't know if you can tell, that it's kind of squishing out a little bit. Not that big of a deal. Because it's hard to keep it really consistent, especially when you're like me. I get hypoglycemic, and when I'm hungry, like I am right now, I start to get shaky. And then you really see it when, when I'm trying to use the glue gun. After I did five of these last night, I got a little bit quicker. This one's just ever so slightly going downhill. but So again, it's kind of like you have to just figure out what looks best to you in terms of how many times to go around. And I'll tell you, like, when I'm done here, whether it seems like it's more than halfway, less than halfway, or right about halfway. I never really, to be honest, I never really looked at an acorn, like, closely and thought about it um, until maybe beginning of this summer, late like maybe early June, I was walking up near our camp one morning and I came across the prettiest acorn. And I never, like I said, I never really thought about it until I picked one, pick, picked it up and looked at it. It was like the most beautiful shade of green. And now I, I should have really looked at some more since then because I don't know if that's just the color that they are before they turn brown or if I just got like a random really pretty, I just was so like taken by that acorn and the color of green that it was, it was just so pretty. So I think, um, let's see if I go, I think I'll go just a little bit further, finish out this. I'm not going to count the, the number of times I went around because it's all going to depend on what kind of twine you have. If you have really thin twine, it's going to take um, a bunch more wraps to get it. But if you can get that first top part started, then you're in good shape. So then I'm going to just decide to cut it off here and then finish off some glue there. And try not to burn myself. And then find my little my little twig. So there's the top. So there's, it's kind of hidden by the frayedness of the end of the twine from me working it around. Um, but I basically, and it, I'm not worried about it going all the way in. I might cut this just a little bit. Scissors would probably be good enough. But all I did then was 
put a good little chunk of hot glue in there. And then I took these up after I was just done. I took them upstairs just as the storm was ending. So if you've ever read like one of my blog posts that was 10 things you might not know about me, one of the things that I told everybody one time was I'm like kind of afraid of tornadoes. <laughs> um, when my dad was building um, my our house, when I was in seventh grade, we moved here in the middle of the year and my dad was living here while we were still living at our um, old home in Charleston, West Virginia. And that tornado came through in what, 86, I think it was, right when he was building, the, like the frame of our house was up. And something about that and hearing about it triggered like this fear of mine. I'm better now, but it used to be that as soon as it would get windy, I don't know if it's because when we bought this house, we are up on a hill and it is so dang windy. And every year it just seems to get, I thought we saw the worst one the last time and, and it just keeps getting windier. Um, but I was ha perfectly happy to stay down here last night during the storm and work on these little acorns. But when I have my man door open that goes out to the garage, um, I had to close it because I could hear it pounding out there. And, um, you know, I, I, I hope that everybody stayed safe during, I was just glad that we weren't out and about, but I know there were people who were, so I was perfectly happy to stay down here, uh, during the, all of that. But yeah, I would just hold it there until it, you know, feels like, or at least leave it be until it has set. And if you feel like you need to add a little bit more around the top, you can. When I took them upstairs, finally, after I was done and the storm had settled, um, my son, he was like, oh, those are cute. And he picked, he picked them all up. Like he picked every one up by the little stem. And I'm like, I just put the glue on. Don't pull them by the steps. But they stayed. So by the time I got up there, they were pretty, um, pretty set. And that's it basically. So I made five of them and I liked the look of five. They look good in, you know, on a little plate, on a bowl, um, intermixed with like your beaded garlands. I, like you saw, if you saw the picture earlier with some pumpkins, something fall themed, but again, you could do these in whatever you could just stain them Brown. Super easy. Takes more time to just, you know, put the glue on than, than really anything else. And it's a super easy, whitewash technique if you want to try it. But anyway, I think I forgot to, to set the, uh, the listing to active, but I, I will do that right now. You will see sets of five of these wooden eggs in the maker's market. And I'll put that link down below as soon as I make that active. But we have, we have several sets still available that we could, um, you know, if you need, if you're looking for the wooden eggs, but again, you could do them with plastic. It's just that they're probably a little more complicated by the time you prime try to prime them and roll them over to spray them to get that primer to adhere and then do your painting and stuff you probably would just twine the part that comes up since they come apart you would probably just twine the part the shorter part that when you pull it apart which is typically the the wider part and then I guess maybe you could go a little further once you put them together you might be able to go down a little bit further but um, if you would like to try these and grab your own twine, it's not a kit, but we do have extra wooden eggs. So don't forget to check tomorrow. Um, congratulations to Robin Ann slash Robin Berkeley for winning last week. And if you're watching the replay, meaning that you're not watching this at that started at noon, then please tell us below that you're watching hashtag replay and um, Hopefully by next week, I'll have some more stuff in the maker's market for you. There's still so much to go through. Every week I'm like, I'm going to get to it. I'm going to get to it. And then I don't. So, ah, uh, Darcy already did it. Perfect. She must have already put them, she already put them active for me. So thanks, Darcy. Um, so we'll see you next week, but hopefully we'll see you plenty of times in between. And um, I'm excited about the upcoming week. All right. Thanks, everybody. Glad to be back on this page. See ya.